chemists had been fascinated by the calabar bean ever since British missionaries brought it back from Africa in the mid-1800s. From the bean, they had isolated an alkaloid called physostigmine used to treat glaucoma. But no one had been able to synthesize the complex molecule. Synthesis is the process of making a natural product or some other substance artificially in the lab one step at a time from extremely simple building blocks. Synthesis was the highest calling for a chemist in the 1930s. A successful synthesis could bring great medical benefits by making a scarce natural product more widely available. Just as important, it proved beyond a doubt that the chemist understood how the molecule was put together. There were very few alkaloids that had been made from scratch in Julian's time. The synthesis of physostigmine would bring recognition to whoever achieved it. And that's what Percy Julian set out to do. A high-profile scientific victory would be just the thing to get his career back on track. But it wouldn't be easy. Physostigmine was unlike any molecule that had been synthesized before. It bristled with spots around the molecule where methyl groups were hanging. That's a carbon with three hydrogens. There are actually four of these. And getting them in the right place is essential to making nature's molecule. It was a formidable chemical challenge for anybody to, uh, to tackle in the early 1930s. Julian tackled it the way all chemists do, one step at a time. When you synthesize a molecule, you start with very small substances, substances you can buy or that you know how to make already. You then start assembling those into fragments of the thing that you're hoping to make in the end. They're called intermediates. And what you're doing is you're following a particular path. This path takes you from the simple starting substances all the way to the final product, the natural product. To build his molecule, Julian drew on a battery of techniques for manipulating atoms. One can heat something to a very high temperature. That usually gets the atoms vibrating and makes new uh, bonds possible. You can oxidize something. You can add oxygen to it. You can take oxygen out of a molecule. That's a reduction. We can expose it to pressure. Sometimes we can expose it to light to cajole the atoms to do what we want. At each step, Julian had to verify that he'd actually made the compounds he intended to. For this, he relied on a device called a combustion train. This technique takes an organic molecule which contains carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, and burns it. By weighing the resulting gases, Julian could tell what atoms were present and in what ratio. How much carbon does it have? How much hydrogen does it have? How much nitrogen does it have? If your compound has the right ratio, you're a long way towards being sure you've made what you thought you made. And then you repeat this process of purification and of analysis for each intermediate until you finally get to the natural product. Working around the clock, Julian and Pico synthesized a compound that was one step removed from physostigmine. Since that last step was already known, this would count as a complete synthesis. But before they could publish, Robinson struck again with his own synthesis of the same compound. The race was over. The shock was almost unbearable. We were not the first, just the Me Too's. Why did he of so much fame, who did not all need the glory, have to snatch the prize from us? Suddenly my eye caught something. Look, Yosef, he's made a big blunder. Our crystals melted at about 39 degrees Celsius body temperature. Indeed, we were able to melt them by closing them in our armpits. His compound melted not at body temperature, but almost 50 degrees higher. He hasn't got it, I cried. 
the melting point of a molecule is a fingerprint. If Julian's melting point is correct, then Robinson's can't be, and these can't be the same substance. And Julian quickly grasps on that and says, you've got the wrong compound. Now the pressure was on Julian and Pico to prove they were right. Percy was a bundle of nerves, but yet he had this underlying drive that uh, didn't permit him to, to stop, to run away, to give up. To confirm his synthesis, Julian needed to take one final melting point. When chemists took a melting point, they would put some crystals into a capillary tube, strap that capillary tube to a thermometer, and then place the complete assembly into an oil bath. They're looking to determine the exact moment when the crystals begin to melt. 30. To claim victory over Robinson, Julian had to show that another set of crystals from his synthesis melted at the same temperature as their natural counterpart, 135 degrees. 134. Melting. 135. 136. Finished. This has got to be the ultimate high. 